welcome to Julie Reads Her Bookshelf. I'm Julie and um, it's summer here in Australia. It's uh, officially the beginning of December, which um, in, in this country we count as the start of summer. And summer means that the courts are closing. And as a lawyer, my, uh, my work is winding down for the year. So now I actually have a little bit of time um, to devote to things other than work. And I uh, wanna use that time to really give this channel um, a bit of a, a, a good go. So um, today I wanna actually talk a little bit about my trip to France uh, earlier in November and all of the bookish things I did there. Um, so I'll start a little bit by explaining what the trip was and then um, I'll also um, talk a little bit about the bookish things I did and the books I bought. I should say the books I bought were included in the 90 uh, books that I have counted as unread on my shelf. So um, I haven't bought any new books since the first video on this channel. Uh, this is simply a recap of what happened last month. The trip started in late October, early November, and I actually started off uh, in Milan and Venice. And from there, uh, I met up with a friend and we went through to uh, Strasbourg, um, where our French teacher lives. And from Strasbourg, then we went to Paris. Uh, and uh, it wasn't until we got to Paris that I really permitted myself to buy any books because I didn't want to buy them and then have to carry them for weeks. Um, so uh, as is uh, now a ritual, whenever I get to Paris, uh, I go to Shakespeare and Company. Um, unfortunately, my experience this time was not altogether pleasant. Um, Shakespeare and Company, for those who don't know, is a famous bookshop um, on the left bank uh, of the River Seine. It faces almost directly onto uh, the Notre Dame, which is on an island in the middle of the river. Um, and it is just this hokey pokey, lovely old school bookshop. It mostly sells um, new English language books, but it does have a secondhand shop section at the front of the bookshop. Uh, and so I remember the first time I went to Shakespeare and Company when I was quite a young girl um, and I just was absolutely enchanted by the atmosphere in this bookshop. Um, it was always busy, but I have to say when I went this time, it was the busiest it has I have ever seen it. Um, almost to the point of being unbearable. There was a line out the door all the way down the street. So it took you a while to even get into the bookshop. And once you were in there, it was almost a single file situation where you had to keep moving in the one direction. And there wasn't really a lot of scope or a lot of opportunities to kind of um, loiter and peruse the books and, and, and go at a leisurely pace. And so it was really unfortunate actually. Even though, though no photos were allowed, it, it, it did seem like there were a lot of people um, there to sort of just take photos and buy tote bags and merchandise. I didn't, it didn't look like a lot of them were there, in fact, to buy actual books. I did buy some books, um, but I'll, I'll talk about them a little bit later on. One of the other things I did uh, in Paris was that I went to the Proust exhibition, uh, which is on at the Bibliothèque Nationale which is this fabulous modern building um, in Paris that's made, made to look like an open book. Um, and it was a really, really good exhibition, I have to say. Um, the exhibition runs through all seven books um, in the In Search of Lost Time series. And it has a lot of the kind of the art, the real life figures that some of the characters are based on, uh, a lot of information about Proust. And it has on display some of Proust's manuscripts. So you really see the evolution of the work and, and what he did when he sort of took out pieces and, and added new things in. And he had a very curious way of attaching effectively to post-it notes to his manuscripts. So you, it must have been a real process um, to go through his manuscript after his death to um, figure out what was the real or the latest version of the drafts that he was doing. On to the books I got. Um, so the first book I actually didn't buy in Paris. I picked it up at a little free library in Strasbourg in the Parc de Orangerie, um, and that's La Poésie Engagée. 
It's a book intended for um, college students and it's an anthology of political poetry in French. So I'm hoping, of course, um, every year I set myself a goal of reading one book in French and one book in Chinese, uh, in addition to all the English language reading that I do. So um, I'm hoping to get around to this next year. And it was free. The second book I bought, I actually did get in um, uh, Shakespeare and Company, and you can see the little stamp on the page, just fabulous. And I actually already got a coffee stain on the book. Um, and I bought this book because I was amazed that there was a Proust book that's actually a new release. So this is The Mysterious Correspondent, New Stories by Marcel Proust. And um, the, it appears to be some um, posthumously, I suppose, found and edited stories of Proust. I'm looking forward to reading these because I have thought that I read everything by Proust that is currently still in print, uh, which is predominantly the In Search of Lost Time books and some of his poetry that's been um, also posthumously published by Penguin, but it appears there's a new volume. So we'll see how I feel about that one. The third book I got, I had actually already read, which is Colette by, or Chéri by Colette. I think I mentioned in a previous video, Colette is one of those authors who's not often talked about um, uh, in the Anglophone world. And I can't quite figure out why, because she is incredibly insightful and um, lyrical and a great storyteller. And she has some fabulous similes and metaphors running through her writing that are just divine. Um, and she also writes very, very entertaining books. So Shelley is the story of Léa de Longval, um, who is a aging courtesan facing the end of her career. She has devoted the last six years to the amorous education of the handsome and spoiled Shetty, a playboy half her age. And when an advantageous marriage is arranged for Shetty, Leia reluctantly decides their relationship must end, but neither lover can foresee how deeply they are connected or how much they will have to give up. It's the kind of book you read in one, fit, uh, one sitting and I absolutely loved it. Um, and uh, I should say Col uh, Colette doesn't um, just write about aging women or, or women of a certain age. Um, she also, uh, through her Claudine series, write about very young girls. So it seems she seems to be a writer who really has a grasp of the lives of women at each stage of their lives. So I'm looking forward in the future to reading more of her books. Now, the final book is a very, very jewelry book. Um, and I actually first heard about this book um, on one, one of my favorite literary podcasts, Backlisted, which is a podcast about backlisted books. And one of the hosts of the book, podcast um, said that he was reading this book and that's Jeff Dyer, The Last Days of Roger Federer and Other Endings. Now, anyone who knows me in real life knows that Roger Federer is one of my favorite, favorite human beings on this planet. And I was absolutely devastated when he retired this year. Um, but interestingly, this book came out before he announced his uh, formal retirement. And it's not about Federer, not entirely. Let me just read um, the, uh, the blurb. Could it be that our deepest desire is for it all to be over? In this ingeniously structured and endlessly stimulating investigation, Jeff Dyer sets his own encounter with late middle age against the last days and last achievements of writers, painters, athletes, and musicians who've mattered to, th to him throughout his life. In a playful uh, charm and penetrating intelligence, he examines Nietzsche's breakdown in Turin, Bob Dylan's reinventions of old songs, J.M.W. Turner's paintings of abstracted light, John Coltrane's cosmic melodies, John Rees's return to the, uh, from the dead while still alive, and Beethoven's final quartets, and considers the intensifications and modifications of experience that come when an ending is within sight. Oh, and there's stuff about Roger Federer and tennis too. <laughs> I I um, saw the blur for this and I just could not resist getting this. Plus it had pretty good reviews on my um, on the podcast that I was talking about backlisted. So I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. Those are the books I got in Paris. Uh, three of them remain unread and part of the 90 books I have yet to read. And, um, and one of them uh, I have already read.